Fasika Shabbat Shalom. Pesah, Senbet Salam. Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Wendem Yadin. This is the, this is the Shabbat. And this Shabbat, the regular readings, the Torah portion reading and feedings, our regular course of readings and feedings, of course, are suspended because this is a high Isla day, a high holy day known as and season this week, actually, the Samen, this, um, eight days or so, if we look at the fullness, seven to eight days, beginning from the eve of, um, the Shabbat, or the 3rd, April 3rd, 2015. Um, i got a lot of meditation on I, and I heart and mind, you know, both near and far. And I want to, first of all, um, begin off with um, a brief reading from Hebrews, right, from Hebrews. I'm pointing out this particular book right here. This is Zainai um, Ras Tefari Haggadah, or the... The Seder for the Pesach or for Fasika, according to the royal order of Ainai Ethiopian Hebrews. You can see over here on the page, and I give thanks to Ainai co-laborers, um, and in particular, um, Ainai sister wife for updating this and presenting it so that all of us can be on the same page over here. Here we go. Here's a pointer. You see over here, usually for the Torah portion reading and feeding, some of the key links both on site and also off site. So right here, if you click on this tab right here, Passover week Torah readings, these are the readings for, I'll say almost, almost the next two weeks, the next two Sabbaths, the next two Shabbats. So when you click on that particular link right there, it'll lead you to this particular page right here. And on this page, um, adapted from Hebrew for Christians because of its basic accuracy, both from the Judeo as well as the Messianic or Christos. Actually, what it reminds me of Hebrew for Christians is the original Tawahido. You know how the black Jews became the black, uh, Judahite Christians of the line of the tribe of Judah, right? The basic foundation and foundation, how we went from the old covenant, the Alakidan, the Berit, um, the Berit Hashana to the Berit Hadash or from the Belui Kidan to the Hadis or the Hadis Kidan. Now here, this is for the Torah you know, the Torah readings for this Passover, Fasika, or Pesach week. The Torah reading cycle is suspended for the holy day um, week or the holiday, some would say, but the holy day, uh, Subai Samint, Shavua of unleavened bread, Yekita, uh, Kita and Jerab Baal, which is also called Fasika or Passover week. Um, among many of the Christians, they will call, especially the Orthodox, they call this um, Passion. I think Passion Week because of the Passion of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, for I and I salvation. All right. Now, in our Ethiopian Hebrew tradition, we're getting to the, the roots, the real roots of Rastafari and the roots of the biblical scriptural prophecy. Now, with each day of the of the week, of the strong, if you please, Rastafari, um, from Nisan 15th through Nisan 22nd. Now, Nisan 15th actually would be this day, the so-called Saturday or the Shabbat day. But in this cycle, the, the Passover, Fasika, actually began from the eve or the evening of Friday, right, or the 14th. That would be the 14th of um, Nisan, or the month, or Nisan, actually, or the month of Abib, Abebe, Aviv, right? So there are certain readings from the Torah, the Orit, the five books of uh, Musa, as well as Haftarah, um, 
readings from the prophets as well as during this particular time. In fact, for this first day, the Song of Songs, the whole book of the Song of Songs is also read in um, the Ethiopian, Hebrew, and even the latter day Jewish tradition. So you'll see the readings right here and the days, right? The days this year, 2015, um, which is a blood moon, you know, season. There are heavenly signs as well. So you see on the first day and on the seventh day, the Song of Songs, the complete book is read. That's where you'll see Song of Songs in the K. You'll see a K next to it right there. That means like um, Ketub, you know, to read, you know, basically read the whole book, right? The full book right there. While there are selected verses, right, and passages from the Torah, Right. Then the Haftarah, the prophets. And for this holy season, Song of Songs here on the first day, which is today, Saturday, right, or called Saturday, April 4th. Now, you'll see right here for the eve, we read the Haggadah, right, during the Seder. Right. This is also Shabbat. So it just so happens that this particular Pesach or Fasika Passover um, as they say, fell, right, based on the heavens, right, um, fell on this particular day, which is the, um, beginning of Shabbat, right? But in a different year, it might be a different day of the week. All depends on the, the new moon and when the full moon, when the full moon is seen. That's actually when the, around the 14th day of the month. Now, because the Ethiopian Hebrew calendar is a solar lunar, I've also noticed that other, um, Jews are beginning to say, put the sun first, the solar, since the sun projects the light to the, the sun symbolic of the Messiah and the moon symbolic of Israel in that sense. They'll usually say lunar solar, but I see that, um, uh, Hebrew for Christians also have, I don't know whether they've been listening or just the Holy Spirit been speaking, but it's a solar luna, the Ethiopian Hebrew and even the Jewish um, calendar, you know, what's called the latter day Jewish calendar. So because of the Ethiopian Hebrew uh, being solar and lunar, the dates for each day's readings are not fixed. This is what we call a movable feast. It's a movable feast. That means that in different um, years, according to the heavenly cycle, it will arise right at different times and vary from Shana to Shana, from orbit, from cycle to cycle. Now, this means that the intermediate days of Passover, um, which are called Hol Ha Ma'od, remember Ma'od is the feast or the appointed times, the seasons. Actually, that's the word for the seasons. Where well, he said for signs and seasons, Mo'adim. So during the intermediate days between the beginning and the end, between the Alpha and the Omega, between the Aleph and the Tav, between the Ha and the Pet, if you please, are called Chol Ha Ma'od, right? And this also varies from Shana to Shana. Now remember, now, please remember that the day, according to Yahweh, Jah's way, truth and life, it begins at sunset, all right? Not at sunrise. It begins at sunset, according to the creator of heaven, earth, and the seas, and all that is therein. Now, to ensure the accuracy of a particular day's reading, Always check a good Ethiopian Hebrew or if you can't find a good Ethiopian Hebrew, you can check a good uh, Jewish um, holy day, holiday um, calendar. Now, here's what's so very interesting that um, on the first day, right, the first, the Erev, what's called the Erev Pesach. We want to actually touch on what what is Passover, the metaphysical Bible dictionary 
gives a very good overview and we might spend some time actually going through that aspect so that we can get a kind of an overstanding, a good understanding, an understanding, and come to overstanding on that. And once again, thanks to um, Wendem Dawid for reminding I and I in one of the previous, I think, Testify Tuesday broadcasts. There's also two other words that sound a lot like Pesach that are in that particular section with Passover in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, they also point to the root of this word Pesach, um, Fasika in the Ethiopic Pay, Fe, Pe, interchanges among some speakers. So it's the same word in the same, from the same roots. So with that being said, I just want to just kind of remind ones and ones because ones and ones might say, well, where's the, you know, some might be reading the Torah portion readings and feedings instead of the more appropriate readings for this season. So we're doing this kind of a vid as a kind of an overview as well as a, as a I minder, I, and I, I minder, um, to, uh, download this particular document right here, right? Um, Worthy is Jalam, the PDF, um, and to read through that, you know, study through that. Maybe one sitting you can't read through that. Maybe other things are going on. But please, um, you know, during this eight or so days, which kind of cuts through a kind of an entire, almost like two Shabbats, it would be good to um, read through that particular document um, as it, puts into context and many of the quotes and references will no doubt have you studying and looking up, you know, much, but that is necessary so that we'll get in touch with the ground and the root of the reality of the King of Kings in and through I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So I want to just touch on that, the reading of the, the um, Rastafari Passover Haggadah, the booklet known as Worthy is John Lamb. And what is a key verse right here, and we actually want to touch on this as we um, go forward. Let's touch on Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Right? Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. And let's put it in context, and let's begin off with Revelation um, 5, 5. And let's read through the song. There's a song right there. So Revelation chapter 5, it speaks of the sealed book. Um, well, let's begin with the, the first verse. So ones can understand this in the revelation of Ras Tefari, right? Um, when people say, well, why do you say such and such? And why Haile Selassie and the King of Kings? Well, here is another reason why, because worthy is John Lamb. So the seven sealed book, and it begins Revelation chapter 5, verse um, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. It's very interesting. It says, and John saw in the hand of him who sat on the throne. Yet he does not identify who it is that's sitting on the throne. Some people will say, well, it's it's Christ. And no doubt, Father and Son being one, I cannot say that it is not Christ. But the person speak the person sitting right on the throne in the revelation is the King of Kings, is Kadamawi Hala Salasi, is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kadamawi Hala Salasi, Suyuma Egziavihir, Nagusa Neges Ze Ethiopia. That's the revelation of that revelation, right? And here is the groundation. It says, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. As I've mentioned before, that the backside of the book is the spine of the book. Just like your, your spine is in your back, not on your side, right? On the left or the right side. Anyway, be that as it may, it says, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth 
neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I, Johannes, John, speaking here, the grace of Yah, wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. This is what's interesting. He says, um, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Question, man under the earth? <laughs> you know, people say, oh, those are the dead people. The dead know nothing according to the Bible. All right? But no man, right? No man where? It says no man in heaven. Is there man in heaven? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Now, I want to bring this up right here. We'll return to this in one moment. Let's uh, let's uh, bring up this particular page right here. Because we were able to open the book. Um, <laughs> was able to open the book and to look thereon. All right. Okay, here's from Worthy is Jah Lamb. Right. And the good thing about the PDF, you get to see some of the full color pics. This is a black and white right here. Right. From an ancient Ethiopia illuminated manuscript right here. Right. This is the view. This is the the artist, uh, Holy Spirit filled artist, Ethiopian Hebrew artist bringing to illumination, to light this word here in the prophecy and in the scripture. This is the groundation. That's all we said in the brief vid. There can be no exodus of Jah people unless there's first a celebration of Pesach. And this is speaking of the people as, as, as a nation, as a group of people, you know, the once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel. And this is also speaking of individuals, even in their Christ man or Christian walk. It is, it's a prerequisite because it's the key. It's, it's, it's the groundation. And so here we're going to see this, this pick coming up, but I really want to just show this particular pick right here. I think this brings to light both he who sits on the throne and the lamb, according to the symbology of the lamb. Here in verse 5, here's where we speak of Christ in his kingly character. Those who have a Schofield study Bible will see the subscription is Christ in his kingly character. And then it gives Isaiah or Isaiah 11 and 1, as well as Jeremiah 23 and 5. Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33, as references to the idea, the word, sound, and power of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, in his kingly character. Ben Gusawi Bahri. Verse 5, Revelation 5, 5. And one of the elders saith to me. So one of the elders spoke to Johannes. After Johannes, he wept much. And the reason why is because no man was found worthy, was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And so one of the elders saith to me, Weep not, behold, Moa an Bessa Zeim Negeda Yehuda. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, look, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, which are the seven spirits of the power, the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him, that sat upon the throne. 
Now, moving forward, we, we now have the living creatures and the elders. They worship. Why do they worship? They worship because of redemption. And this is this pic right here. You see this pic right here? Now, this is the black and white that's in the book, right? The black and white. But let me show you um a color version of this as well. We had this on the side in anticipation. Oh, this is the main part right here. Here we have right here. Okay. All right. All right. So let me read this verse once again, right? It says, and I beheld, right? Verse six, and lo, in the midst of the throne, in the where, in the midst, in the center, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as if it had been slain, as, as it, slicha, as it had been slain, stood a lamb as it had been slain. In, in, in the position of being slain, right? Stood this lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, Baruchu, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now, there's a subscription in the Schofield next to verse seven, next to um, came and he came. There's a number one. And, and the bottom it has CF confer or compare with Daniel chapter seven verses 13 and 14. And here's what it reads. It reads that the two visions are identical. The revelation adding that which was hidden from Daniel. So there was an aspect that was hidden from Daniel, right? That was added in revelation that the kings and the priests of the church age are to be associated with the son of man, the child of humanity, the lamb as it had been slain in his reign, in his rulership on the earth. All right, in his rulership on the earth. Now I want you to note that what's speaking of right here is before the culmination. So when we're saying that his majesty fulfills that, in the cycle and course of prophetic and historical fulfillment, it makes perfect sense and it fits. Because some would say if his majesty is who we say he is, then everything should have been done away with and, and Shangri-La and happy, happy, joy, joy. That's because the pastors and preachers, right, have misinterpreted and misrepresented by and large the prophetic. They've given people a, a kind of a eschatological picture that has some accurate things out of order, right? But let's read on. Let's read on. So it says, the living creatures and elders, they worship because of redemption. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, we've been studying the tabernacle, and it's so very interesting within the um, within the tabernacle view, right? The tabernacle view or the tabernacle um, perspective of things that we have the altar of Aishans or the altar of incense, right? And the altar of incense, it tells us that the, the, the prayers go up like incense, so incense is connected with, um, you know, with the worship, right? With worship. I want to bring this up a little bit more. Let me close this right here. Let me get that one more time. Um, so, okay, is that that? Okay, let me see if I can get this other one. I want to get the full color picture. Here we go, right here. Here's the full color picture. So you can see this right here. So you can see the same picture in a little better full of color. So you see them worshiping, right? And worshiping, you see the lamb as it had been slain, right? A very rare but beautiful prophetic view. So when one's read, they were able to see and able to express in these illuminated manuscripts this prophetic view, right? This view of prophecy. Much of what has been fulfilled 
in the coming of his majesty, coming as a thief in the night, and the joke is on the careless, All right? But let's go forward right here. So it says that, and they sung a new song, a new song. So with the Rastafari faithful reggae and the king's music is also a new song, right? Saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us to our God, to our power, to Elohim, Hailei, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Right? Some people think great God will come from the sky, take away everything, make it win feel high. If you know what life is worth, you'll look for yours on earth. Speaking to the priests and kings who are to reign and rule on earth. The angels exalt the lamb. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, here it goes, wait for it. Worthy is the lamb. That John's lamb is worthy. So what does that mean to I and I as Rastafari? That means that the Christ, that his majesty both preaches to us, proclaims to us, and reveals to us in reality is the worthy lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's the tree of life. That's the, those are the, those are some of the fruits on the tree, even Kabbalistically speaking, the tree of life, right? So then it, it goes forward here to verse um, 13 and 14 to complete the chapter. Here's the universal adoration of the lamb who is the king, who is the negus, right? And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power to him that sitteth upon the throne. What throne are we speaking of? We're speaking of the throne of great King David. And to the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. This is the reason why we said John not die. You know, in the reality, we might not overstand all the almighty secrets, but we know that he is true to his word. As the word says, even if we are not faithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. So we have faith in him that even when we fall short, he has provided for us his son, his lamb. And this is the reason for the season. This is the, the meditation for this holy day. Um, strong, the Passover strong, brothers and sisters. Um, so once again, um, Fasika, you know, Melkam Fasika, Shabbat Shalom, um, Melkam Pesach, Senbet Salam to the eye in the name of the King of Kings and through I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, for worthy is Jalan.